Since 1938, Matson, in partnership with the Guam National Olympic Committee and Guam's delegation to the 2021 Tokyo Olympics, Biba Team Guam. Cars Plus Hyundai, home of the Kona electric vehicle, an electric heart with an SUV soul. Test drive yours today at Cars Plus. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it, and King's Restaurant, serving your local breakfast, lunch, and dinner favorites for over 45 years. Ahead on primetime, lawmakers in session discuss a resolution relative to the war claims filing date. Plus, the deadline is fast approaching for lawmakers to approve the fiscal year 2022 budget. And the contractor of the solar farm project that has caused much of the damage to Marble Cave may be facing serious fines and even the possibility of the revocation of its license. Hafadeh and good evening, everyone. Senators held a relatively brief session today. They confirmed a new Superior Court judge, Alberto Tolentino, but they recessed without discussing any more bills, including, surprisingly, a pair of measures to amend the RISE Act. Instead, they're scheduled to reconvene on Friday for voting. Also today, they moved a resolution by Senator Talina Nelson to the voting file. It asked President Biden to use his administrative power to remove the filing deadline for war claims. It also seeks to extend eligibility to the survivors of would-be claimants who have since passed away. Several senators, including Amanda Shelton and Frank Blas, offered their support. This resolution embodies the voices of our Manamku, who for more than half a century have shared their stories of their youth with their children and grandchildren. Their stories have shaped generations of Guam's people and in dignity and respect, have shed light on the atrocities of war and the trauma many have suffered for decades. I'm sure, Madam Speaker, you've experienced this yourself. There was, a, there was still hesitancy on the part of many of these individuals to want to relive this, that tragedy. Those horrific circumstances that they had to live by. The question is, are we going to penalize individuals who have kept this in themselves for seven decades and find it very difficult to relive it. Those who suffered atrocities during the World War II occupation of Guam were allowed to file claims under the Guam World War II Loyalty Recognition Act, and Congress established the Foreign Claims Settlement Commission to administer the claims. Meanwhile, the legislature is preparing to deliberate on the fiscal year 2022 budget, which must be passed by the end of this month. But they continue to raise concerns over a lack of information from the administration on how it plans to spend some $600 million in American Rescue Plan funds. In short, they're asking the governor to show us the money. Speaker Therese Herlahi says it's going to be very difficult to pass a budget if senators only have half the picture. She says general fund revenues are projected at 600 to 700 million dollars, but there's another 600 million in ARP funds that can also be tapped. And we're being asked to um, look the other way when it comes to agencies such as public health and not fund um, things such as senior citizens and foster children's uh, services and and trust that uh, the ARP funds will take care of that. Well, I would, you know, I'm hoping that we can get further clarification because I don't think that's, um, it, it just, I'm not comfortable doing a budget like that. Senators know that the line agencies have told the front office what their needs are, but neither they nor Adloop have provided the legislature with much in the way of details. I'm hoping when the governor returns that she can, uh, you know, brief us on her trip and, and give us a, uh, the details at that time. I think, um, you know, I think that would be the right time right before we start our budget to hear the details of this ARP plan. And even if it's verbal, even if it's, you know, flexible and it's going to change later, to hear it from her directly would, would make it very um, much more concrete for us to rely on during the budget process. An Adeloupe spokesperson let us know that the governor is on her way back from D.C. and should be home before the end of the week. And just to be clear, if you're eligible for an all-rise payment, you should still go ahead and get your mayor's verification. 
but as ordered by Acting Governor Josh Tenorio to avoid the congestion at mayor's offices, residents will no longer have to wait around for their verifications. Instead, Rev and Tax will now accept the applications and confirm residency with the mayors. After meeting with DRT on Monday, Mayor's Council President Jesse Alley advised colleagues that the department will have three piles of applications. Complete applications with only the mayor's verifications pending. So that means the applicant can submit it without the, without the mayor's verification. And then the third is just incomplete applications. As of today, the application and payment process will be on a first-in, first-out basis. That means the sooner you file a complete application with the mayor's verification, the sooner you'll get your all-rise payment, or you can submit it without one. When that happens, we're asking that you, you do that expeditiously because, again, the, the, res, the constituents will, will have to wait longer for you to verify them and send it back to DRT so the DRT continues to process. <coughs> Revan Tax, though, has still not released the final application form. In the latest on the environmental damage at Marble Caves, the contractor for the solar farm project could be looking at stiff fines and possibly even a revocation of its license. Tyler Matanani reports. Over the past couple of days, investigators from the Guam Contractors Licensing Board have been at the solar farm site looking into whether Samsung ENC America and its main contractor, Kepco, have been complying with their approved plans. GCLB Executive Director Buddy Orsini. There's some findings that we, we, we found and um, uh, we're going to take it to another step as soon as we um, conclude. Uh -huh. um, so there's there's some documentations that uh, we request that um, um, consist of samples and materials and specifications. Uh, we need the the latest one. Uh, apparently, there was uh, two different um, revisions that uh, happened here. Guam EPA has already issued an $18 million penalty to the contractor for failing to follow its sediment and erosion control plans. But Guam law only allows a maximum fine of $125,000. DPW is also conducting its own assessment. As for the Guam Contractors Licensing Board... Our role is to protect the community and the public from willful violations and also um, uh, concerns of EPA, environmental, and public health issues. Orsini clarifies they are not in charge of monitoring the work, but rather conducting an investigation should plans or concerns arise. And that's definitely what happened in the Marble area. Like Guam EPA, Orsini says they found a ponding basin that was included in the plans, but wasn't constructed. If that thing was there, um, this incident would have been prevented. The CLB is expected to complete their investigation by the end of the week. Depending on the severity of the violations, they will hold a special board meeting and could find the main contractor, Kepco. I'm not saying the, we're going to give them a fine. That's not yeah. what I'm saying right, here, right now. But in the event, if it turns that way, uh, we, uh, based on our law, uh, 21 GCA Real Property Chapter 70 contractors, the minimum will be $200 and we can go all the way up to 50% of the contract amount. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Tyler Matanani. In court news, 57-year-old Jesse Cruz Camacho will have to spend the next 24 months in jail after pleading guilty to stealing and then selling more than $250,000 worth of electronic devices from the Navy Exchange where he worked for three years beginning in June of 2016. During his sentencing hearing in the district court, he was also ordered to serve two years supervised release, 100 hours of community service, and pay $261,000 in restitution to Navy Exchange Guam. And local businessman Evan Montvel Cohen is scheduled to be sentenced on November 18, this after pleading guilty to federal charges related to fraud in the district court. In March 2020, he was accused of fraudulently using a man's personal information to rent an apartment in Tamuning. In 2009, Montvel Cohen pleaded no contest to a charge of first-degree theft in the First Circuit Court of Hawaii. In that case, he was accused of stealing thousands from a landscaping firm and sentenced to five years of probation. 
And convicted sex offender Mark Felix was sentenced to five years in prison with credit for time served and must serve a parole term of five years for groping and trying to digitally penetrate a sleeping minor. Judge Vernon Perez told Felix, quote, not only did you impact the victim in a negative way to which she's traumatized and may suffer from trauma for years, but it was a trust that was violated. He was convicted of attempted third-degree criminal sexual conduct and two counts of fourth-degree criminal sexual conduct. He will also have to register as a sex offender. And police have released details on a widely circulated video yesterday of a Chalan Pago arrest. It shows officers with guns drawn as they apprehended two men. GPD acting PIO Sergeant Mike Uggen. We had a call of an individual who identified that there uh, was somebody pointing a gun out in the parking lot of Yoen Mart in Jotna at vehicles passing by. Officers responded to the call and made their way to the parking lot. However, the vehicle had left the area. A description of the car and license plate was broadcast, and responding officers later located the men at the intersection of Route 4 and Darrow Road in Chalampago. The two individuals that you see that were backing him up are not uh, undercover officers, but they are officers. They are conservation officers who also heard the uh, radio transmissions. Central Precinct officers took over and arrested the two men. They were identified as 28-year-old Joven Marquette Aguero and 37-year-old Arthur Barcinas. They're charged with reckless conduct and illegal firearm possession. Barcinas was additionally charged with illegal possession of a controlled substance, illegal possession within a drug-free school zone, and illegal possession with intent to distribute. Public health officials met with their military counterparts today to take a closer look at their rising number of COVID cases. Of the 29 recently confirmed cases, 23 were Defense Department personnel. Chief Public Health Officer Chima Mimwakwen. We don't have the hard, you know, we don't have the hard details on, you know, who is fully vaccinated, you know, when they were in, in, um, um, when they were exposed. You know, that is that is information that the case investigator, uh, investigation unit of, of um, the military would have. Um, but it, it's just for us to sit down. We, we were looking at the bigger picture, you know. We're just not trying to concentrate on, you know, who, what, when. We're looking at what is the impact on our community, you know. What, what measures do you have in place to stop this from happening? How did it happen? And so it's looking at, you know, going forward and then looking at how we can, how we make sure that this is actually taken care of. In the past five days, the military has seen 40 confirmed positive cases. And Bakwan would, uh, could not say whether the positives were from personnel arriving here for the ongoing training exercises. We'll be back with more news right after this. Social distancing may be the new norm, but connection will always be our tradition. Through good times and tough times, we remain connected with you. Mass may be the new fashion, but protection will always be our style. You can always count on us to protect the things that matter the most. Sanitizing may be the new routine, but caring will always be our practice. We care about your loved ones and the things you value the most. And as we welcome our new normal, one thing remains certain, we will always be here for you. We're open and ready to serve you. Calvo's Insurance, a legacy of trust. Do you ever wonder how your favorite products make their way into your local stores? Most arrive on state-of-the-art mats and vessels that transport containers of food, household items, equipment and supplies into the islands every week. Because we know that you depend on us, we work closely with our partners to ensure that our shipments arrive on time, all the time, so you can find your favorite products when you need them. We transport the region's most precious cargo that supports successful businesses and promotes a better quality of life for our families. Matson is proud to have been the hometown shipping carrier for Guam, the CNMI, and Micronesia for the past 25 years. 
and you can count on us to be here for generations to come. Summer is here, and at Cars Plus, we have the perfect Jeep for your summer adventures. Whether you're going off-road or just getting ready to hit the beach down south, make this the summer event you find your Jeep. Like the 2021 Jeep Wrangler or the 2021 Jeep Gladiator. Equipped with Guam's only lifetime powertrain warranty. Call us at 477-7807 or visit our website at carsplusguam.com to schedule a test drive today. Cars Plus, driven by you. It's a special delivery to your inbox every week with your KUAM News Round, program advisories, and promotions. Sign up for the weekly KUAM Digital Digest today on KUAM.com. Welcome back. With students heading back to school in a week, concerns were raised at the mayor's monthly meeting about the stray animal problem on the island. KUAM's Isaiah Uggen has this report. During the Mayor's Council of Guam meeting on Wednesday, village leaders expressed concerns about the stray animal population on the island getting out of control. This morning I caught three dogs. Uh, I called and uh, they're not accepting dogs again because it's full. What are we going to do? Okay, can I have Mayor Pong and Kofi? Gain has uh, done this for uh, over a year already. We're not getting any better, and there's a lot of dogs that are roaming the streets, and they're, you know, uh, they've attacked kids again. And uh, school is uh, opening, and it's going to get worse. With the amount of stray dogs throughout the different villages around the island, there's no real concrete solution to exactly how you're going to bring these dogs up or whatnot. I mean, like Mayor Mack has just said, school's right around the corner. We've got many residents that have kids walk to school and their way to school, there's a bunch of dogs. We're trying our best as mayors and vice mayors throughout different villages and islands to catch these dogs and bring them up to game. But let alone when we call game or call Mayor Papa to see if we can go to game, they're loaded. The Stray Animal Roundup program has been on hold for over a month due to gain shelter capacity being maxed out. It's a committee chaired by Momong Toto Mighty Mayor Rudy Paco, which aims to address the estimated 40,000 stray animals that have been troubling the island for decades. PD Mayor and MCOG President Jesse Alec hopes the solution is developed soon. He says that he's still having conversations with the legislature and the Leon Guerrero Tenori administration about gains capacity and animal control. Eventually, Alec said that the ultimate goal is to transfer all of animal control responsibilities to animal control, because after all, it's their responsibility. The executive director and I did meet with, with Senator Salamistine, and that was one of the issues. Is when you're looking at our operations, sometimes you have to consider that we have, we have, we have to do what we're mandated, and animal control is not part of our mandate. And so we need to, we can say yes, call animal control, but animal, if animal control only has one, I don't really want to know what animal control's excuses are. If, if it's an animal control issue, it needs to be handled by animal control and not the mayor's office. Right, the program remains on hold until further notice. Reporting for Guam's News Network, Guahu Siazia Agan. Congressman Michael St. Nicholas announced three new members of his staff. Tanelta Nelson Mori will serve as the legislative director of the Guam Congressional Office. Kenneth Leon Guerrero was named as Washington, D.C. staff director. And Julian Berdalia was promoted to Guam staff director. Mori has been a staffer for St. Nicholas since his time as a Guam senator. Leon Guerrero first joined the office as the lead caseworker and was subsequently promoted to casework manager. And Berdalia joined the staff through the Wounded Warrior Program and will focus on veteran and military military constituency casework. In another sign that the local economy is slowly rebounding from the effects of the COVID pandemic, the Port Authority reports that in June, the number of incoming containers topped 2020 figures for the first time. Speaking before the Northern Guam Rotary Club, PAG General Manager Rory Respicio praised employees and stakeholders for the port's recovery and accomplishments. So the one thing that COVID reinforced is the importance of ensuring an uninterrupted supply chain into Guam and throughout our region. And in our case at the port, this took everyone having to dig deep within their soul to know their worth and their importance to keeping the 90% of the goods and commodities that come through our island. And so please join me in recognizing our port employees, our industry partners, and their employees for ensuring that the Port Authority of Guam uh, remain 100% operational throughout the pandemic.
Texas DCO adds that the court has also been able to stabilize its finances. Bond rating agency Moody's has removed PAG from Credit Watch, which was imposed as a precaution during the height of the pandemic. It's now rated as stable with a positive outlook. An early morning break-in occurred at the Tamuning Senior and Community Center on Wednesday. According to Tamuning Tumon Harmon Mayor Louise Rivera, electrical equipment and devices were stolen, including a projector. She said the break-in started at a window of the building on the side near the gym. It was cracked open and security camera lines were cut. Rivera says she knew the three individuals seen stealing in the surveillance footage. They are believed to be in their 40s to 60s. We discovered this morning when we came into the center that um, that the door was unlocked and um, we noticed uh, our audio supplies, our cart was moved um, from the storage room into the kitchen area. Um, I believe they were using the cart to push it out closer to the door to where their car is. It's really sad to know that um, you know, these are uh, people that we've helped out in the community and, um, you know, who we uh, provided food for and welcomed them in to come and eat with us and, um, you know, uh, and then to find out that, you know, they're the ones who have actually um, broke into the center. The Tatuha Mayor reminds residents to stay vigilant and aware of their surroundings. We have reached out to police for more details and are waiting on a response. Dave Delgado is next with sports. Don't go away. community calendars brought to you by Taco Bell. Whether it's your first meal or your fourth meal, we've got you covered. Taco Bell, live moss. Do you feel like you're missing out on something? Make life more rewarding with Pacific Points. Earn and redeem points for bill rebates and free load at IT&E. Discounts on fuel at Shell vouchers at Foodies, and United Mileage Plus Miles. You can even pay with Pacific Points at it &E, Shell, and Foodies. Pacific Points. Do more, get more. Guam's auto appearance specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's auto appearance specialist. Over 20 years of experience. From the mines that brought you Taco Bell's Fry Force comes another mouth-watering adventure. Packed with seasoned beef, drizzled with spicy ranch, and covered with your favorite toppings. It's the new Loaded Taco Fries, now serving at a Taco Bell near you. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. What's up, Guam? Dave Delgado here for KUAM Sports. Thanks for watching. On the show tonight, information on this month's Kids Fishing Derby, highlights from the Custom Fitness Kickball Tournament, and results from the Bud Light Women's Futsal League. Check it out. Kids ages 7 to 12 years old are invited to register for the Guam Department of Agriculture's Division of Aquatic and Wildlife Resources Fishing Derby. The event is scheduled for August 28th at the Assin Beach Park. The Derby is limited to the first 75 registered participants. To sign up, head on down to the Division of Aquatic and Wildlife Resources Administrative Office Monday through Friday from 8 to 5 p.m. Participants will also have to attend a mandatory 20-minute clinic on August 14th at the Mangilao Baseball Field. 
Deadline to register for the Derby is August 25th. Participants will also need to provide original birth certificates, passport, or a Guam or military ID. Copies won't be accepted. Congrats to Craft Guam for winning the first annual Custom Fitness Co-Ed Kickball Tournament. The team was made up of men's national soccer team players. Craft Guam defeated Moses in extra innings for the title. Over $2,000 in cash and prizes were awarded. Big thanks going out to FD for usage of the field. Shout out to Kill Pacific, Craft Guam, ERC Hardware, Michael J. Gatewood, The Bottle Shack, and KUAM for supporting the event. The event was held to support the Guam women's national rugby team. Now for some Bud Light Women's Futsal League results. The Sidekicks FC toppled the previously undefeated Guam Shipyard Women's 6-2 in Week 5 play. Quality picked up the 18-2 win over Metro Pacific Inc. Islanders. Heavy hitters Nutrition Mission Southern Heat defeated Team Moses 2-1. Bank of Guam Lady Strikers earned the 12-2 win over the Southern Cobras. Don't forget to check out NBCOlympics.com for all the latest going down at the Tokyo Games. Tonight, Simone Biles is back competing in the Women's Balance Beam Final, and it's an American showdown as Sydney McLaughlin and Dalil Muhammad go for gold in the Women's 400-meter hurdles live the Tokyo Olympics tonight on NBC. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. better with more. Customize and save with the fastest internet speeds in the Marianas by adding mobile, phone, and TV to your bundle with Business Bundles Plus. Docomo Pacific Business. Work better together. KUAM News in partnership with the Guam Visitors Bureau brings you the Guam Safe and WTTC Safe Travel Certified Program Showcase. Look out for this powerful symbol for visitors, island residents, and industry workers alike as it represents establishments with a consistent global commitment to safety practices. Stamped with approval by the Guam Visitors Bureau and the World Travel Tourism Council. Every Monday on KUAM News will feature a different local business who's taken the Safe Guam and Safe Travels pledge to maintain health and safety standards to get Guam back on track. Log on to visitguam.com to see how your business can receive the designation, what businesses in our community are Guam Safe Certified, and have the WTTC Safe Travel Certified. You may ask yourself, what is a blue raspberry? Or a pink lemon? Or even a strawberry watermelon? But they taste so good in these Minute Maid slushies from McDonald's. Who cares? It's more than a drink. It's a McDonald's drink. And before we close out the news tonight, here's our latest round of birthday shout-outs from the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club. It is August the 4th, so join me in saying happy birthday, birthday to Jasmine, whose friends and family say they love you. Megan Guerrero, happy birthday blessings, Megs. You are getting love from Nina, Nino, and the entire familia. Susan Guerrero has birthday blessings, and this cheering, loving, and kind-hearted soul of a woman deserves all of them. We love you, Susan. Happy birthday, says your favorite brother, Joey, and your family. Maricel Pinzon, happy birthday to you, and please enjoy your special day because your family says we all love you with all of our hearts. Dennis Rages II, wishing my son down under a wonderful birthday in Wagga Wagga, Australia. Yeah, they're doing well in the Olympics. And they say in all caps, we miss you and hope you have a great day. You are getting love from the Rages family down in Agate. And happy belated birthday wishes because born on August the 2nd, Bradley Michael Joe. Happy birthday to you and you turn a big 25 for Mama Iris and the whole entire family. And then born on August the 3rd, happy belated birthday to Jack Keto. I know Jack. Happy anniversary to you and Tina from the Pinzon family. Hope each and every one of you have a wonderful, safe, happy, happy birthday.
And you can join the club by registering online on KUAM.com. That's 